Pearl Roadshow Drums. Unboxing, assembly, placement, tuning, accessories, sound test, review, and lesson. This is a review of the Pearl Roadshow Complete Drum Set. I will cover the following topics. Unboxing. I will show you what this kit comes with. Assembly. I will show you how to assemble the drum set. Drum placement. I'll show you how a typical drum kit is placed. Tuning. I'll show you the basics of tuning your drums and an app that will make the process a lot easier. Accessories. I'll show you a few inexpensive accessories that will make any drum set sound its best. Sound test. I'll let you hear what the drum set sounds like. Review. I'll let you know if I think this drum set is worth purchasing. Drum lesson. I'll show new drummers a basic beat to get them started and how to hold the drumsticks. Experienced drummers can skip this section. I'll leave links to everything I talk about in the description below this video if you want to check them out. Let's get started. Unboxing. The box arrived from Amazon safely. I was actually quite surprised that everything fit in one box, but it's very well packed. The Pro Roadshow drum set comes complete. Let's quickly go through the included items. A snare drum with a top and bottom head already assembled. A snare stand. A bass drum. Two bass drum hoops. Front and back bass drum heads. 16 hooks for the bass drum, 17 long tension rods for the bass drum, they give you one extra which I like, a drum pedal, a tom-tom with the top and bottom head already assembled, a tom holder, a floor tom, 13 short tension rods for the floor tom, they give you one extra, a top and bottom head for the floor tom, three floor tom legs, two floor tom steel hoops. You'll need to separate them when you first open the box. They're connected by a tension rod or two. A cymbal holder. Two sets of drumsticks with a bag. A drum throne to sit on. Top and bottom hi-hat cymbals. A hi-hat stand. A crash ride cymbal. A drum key and various papers. I purchased the jazz kit, even though I play rock, to save space. If you purchase the Roadshow Rock Kit or another version, you may have additional drums at different sizes or a cymbal stand, but assembly will essentially be the same and the kits will sound similar. Assembly Let's put together the kit starting with the floor tom. I've turned it upside down. Notice the Pro logo is upside down. Let's place the clear head without the pearl logo on it onto the floor tom. Then place one of the steel hoops on top of the head. Rotate the hoop until the lugs line up with the holes on the hoop. The lugs are what our tension rods will screw into. Next, insert the short tension rods into the lugs and tighten each one of them with your fingers as tight as possible. The goal is to achieve even tightness or tension all around the drum. To do this, it's better to tighten each rod in a diagonal pattern. Use this chart to help you. Some drums have 6, 8, or even 10 lugs. So use the appropriate pattern depending on the number of lugs your drum has. Tighten tension rod 1 on lug 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, etc. Next, let's flip the floor tom right side up and repeat everything we just did. We will place the drum head with the Pearl logo on top. Then add the hoop and line up the holes with the drum lugs. Then we will finger tighten the tension rods. Tighten each rod in a diagonal pattern. Let's move on for now. I'll show you how to tune this drum and all of the other drums a little later. Next, let's place the floor tom legs into the floor tom. They slide into the floor tom leg brackets. Notice the Pro logo. Let's do one at a time. Unscrew the wing bolt if it's too tight. Slide in the leg with the rubber part away from the drum. And then tighten the wing bolt. 
Notice how the bottom of the leg bends outward at the bottom. Repeat this procedure for the other two legs. Then stand the floor tom in the upright position. Let's put together the snare stand next. Spread the legs open and tighten the wing bolt to lock the legs in place. Next, slide in the top part of the stand into the bottom part and tighten the wing bolt. Then adjust the tilter by unlocking its wing bolt, putting it in the desired position, I like it slightly tilted myself, and then lock it in place with the wing bolt. Next, turn the center knob until the basket that the snare will sit on is wide enough to accept the snare. Then place the snare into the basket. Turn the center knob in the opposite direction to tighten the basket around the snare drum so that the snare stays in place. If you tilt your snare drum, it's always a good idea to have one of the stand's legs pointed in the direction of the tilt for good stability. We might as well point out while we are here that the snare drum has a strainer. When engaged, the snares on the bottom of the snare that give the snare drum its unique sound are pressed up against the bottom of the drum head. If you release the lever, the snares will pull away from the drum and the snare drum will sound more like a tom-tom. There's also a snare strainer adjustment screw which adjusts how tight the snares are pulled against the snare drum's bottom head. Adjust it to your liking. Next, let's put together the drum throne where you will sit. Simply expand the bottom legs of the stand and tighten the wing bolt to lock the legs in place. Then insert the next section of the stand as shown. There's a bolt that you can place in any of the holes in this part of the stand to adjust the height of the throne. Tighten the nut to secure it. Then place the cushion on top of the stand. Finally, tighten the wing bolt to lock the cushion in place. Let's put together the bass drum. Notice I have the drum with the Pearl logo facing up so that you can read it. We are going to put the white drum head on first. Notice the placement. When we stand up the drum later, the Pearl logo on the white head will be at the top and the hole will be toward the bottom, but off to one side. Next, we'll put on one of the bass drum hoops. Then we'll attach the hooks to the long bass drum tension rods as shown. You'll need eight. Next, screw the rods into the lugs on the bass drum and the hook will hold the hoop and drum head in place. Just like with the floor tom, we'll just finger tighten all of the tension rods, inserting them in the same diagonal pattern as I showed you earlier. Next, let's flip the bass drum over and repeat the same steps. We will add the clear bass drum batter head with the pearl logo on it. I like the logo as straight as possible, aligned with the top part of the bass drum. The top of the bass drum has the Pearl Roadshow logo on it. Then I'll place the other bass drum hoop on the drum. The hoops do have a seam, so if you are picky, place the seam at the bottom of the drum where it will be hidden on the floor. Then, just like before, add eight more tension rods with hooks and hand tighten them for now. We will fully tune the bass drum a little later. Next, stand the bass drum up with the Pearl Roadshow logo facing the ceiling. And let's extend the two bass drum spurs that will keep the bass drum in place when you are playing it. I do want to show you now that the bass drum spur does have a spike tip that you can extend if you need it. Just adjust the lock nut. The spike is good to hold your bass drum in place on a thick carpet, but don't put it on a surface like a wood floor or you may damage it. I'm not going to use the spikes in my case, so I'll hide it within the rubber tip. I'll loosen the wing bolt and swing the bass drum spur toward the floor. Next, I'll loosen the lower wing bolt and extend the spur until the rubber tip touches the floor and then tighten the wing bolts in place. I'll repeat these steps on the second bass drum spur on the other side of the drum as well. 
Let's put together the bass drum pedal next. I'll insert the beater into the beater holder and tighten the key bolt with the drum key. Then under the footboard is the radius rod. Squeeze it together a little bit and put the two ends into the holes near the bottom of the pedal base. You'll release your grip so it expands and then securely goes into the two holes. Let me show you now how the hoop clamp works on the bass drum pedal before we connect it to the bass drum. It opens and closes depending on which way you turn the wing bolt as shown. Let's slide the pedal onto the hoop of the bass drum facing the clear batter head. It clips into place. Then tighten the wing bolt to lock it in place. Next, let's place the tom holder into the tom holder bass drum bracket on top of the bass drum. If you are facing the clear drum head, it should go in the left hole. Loosen the wing bolt on the bass drum if necessary. Then just slide the tom holder in and tighten the wing bolt to lock it. There is a stop lock that will click into a notch in the bass drum bracket if you rotate the tom holder until it finds the connection. I'll show you how these stop locks can be adjusted shortly. Next, loosen the upper wing bolt and straighten out the tom holder to your desired position. Then tighten it in place. Remember, you can just rough it in place for now. Later, after your drum set is all set up and you are sitting in front of it, you can adjust everything to the perfect angle for comfortable playing. Now let me show you how the stop lock works. There's a second one here on the top part of the tom holder. It can be unlocked, moved to a new position, and then relocked using your drum key as shown. These locks keep everything they hold in position nicely. Next, we will slide the tom tom in place and lock it in using the wing bolt on the tom tom. Let's attach the cymbal holder next. I'll slide it into the other tom holder bass drum bracket hole. Adjust the stop lock if necessary. Lock it in place with the wing bolt on the bass drum. Loosen the wing bolt on the cymbal holder and carefully pull out the boom arm. But don't pull it out all the way. Rotate it into place and then lock the wing bolt. Finally, loosen the top wing bolt and adjust the part of the stand where the cymbal will be placed. Usually straight up or at a slight angle depending on what you prefer. Then tighten that wing bolt to hold it in place. Remove the black wing nut and one piece of cymbal felt. Then place your cymbal on the stand. Next, put the felt back on, then tighten the black wing nut on top to hold everything in place. Don't over tighten it. Now let's build the hi-hat stand. First, open the legs to form a stable base and lock them in place using the wing bolt. Next, just like we did with the bass drum pedal, insert the radius rod into the base of the pedal, squeeze it, then expand it into the two holes until they snap in place. Next, take the hi-hat spikes, there are two of them, and put the springs around them, one on each. Then screw the spikes into the hi-hat base. You'll see two holes. These spikes help keep the hi-hat stand from moving around on a thick carpet, but they can damage flooring like wood, so use them wisely. I'm going to put them in place, but not have them touch the floor. Next, I'll remove the upper pull rod from the top part of the hi-hat stand by loosening the wing bolt on the hi-hat clutch. Set the hi-hat clutch aside. You'll need it soon. The upper pull rod goes into the bottom of the hi-hat stand. It screws into the connector. Once connected, place the upper tube part of the stand into the lower part of the stand like this and then tighten the wing bolt to hold it in place. Next, place the bottom hi-hat on the stand. It's labeled. It will sit on top of the hi-hat cup, a washer, and a piece of felt. Now, take the hi-hat clutch and remove the bottom lock nut by unscrewing it. Also remove one of the felt washers, but leave the other piece of felt in place. Then place the top hi-hat into the hi-hat clutch. 
Place the felt over it and reattach the lock nut by screwing it back on. Then slide the entire thing onto the upper pull rod. Next, push down on the hi-hat pedal, then tighten the wing bolt on the hi-hat clutch. Now the top hi-hat can be moved up and down with the hi-hat pedal. The distance between the hats is up to you. If the bottom hi-hat doesn't quite sit level, that's okay. You don't want your hats to be exactly parallel to each other because this can cause an air pocket to be trapped between them. In fact, there's a tilt adjustment screw if they are too level. Drum placement. Drum placement depends a lot on what the drummer feels comfortable with, but here's the basic setup that many drummers use. The bass drum, tom tom, and crash ride cymbal usually go on the right side of the setup. The snare drum goes in the center. The floor tom goes to the right of the bass drum. The hi-hat goes to the left of the snare. The throne goes behind the snare drum. Now is the time to take a seat and do slight hardware adjustments so that you feel comfortable behind the kit and you can reach everything easily. Tuning. Now let's tune each drum. At this point, all of the tension rods on the drums have been hand tightened on the top and bottom heads. As I mentioned earlier, some of the drums came with the heads already on them. You can loosen them with the drum key and then finger tighten them to get them ready for tuning so that all of the drums are in the same state. Now we will tune the drums using the drum key. It's a good idea to seat the head by pressing down on the drum head with your palms as you begin tuning. Next, I'll turn each tension rod a half turn clockwise on the top head, known as the batter head. The goal is to achieve even tightness or tension all around the drum. To do this, it's better to tighten each rod in a diagonal pattern. Use this chart to help you. Some drums have six, eight, or even 10 lugs. So use the appropriate pattern depending on the number of lugs your drum has. Tighten tension rod one on lug one, then two, then three, then four, etc. Next, strike the drum in the center. You may want to equally tighten the drum head more if you want a higher pitch drum sound or loosen it for a lower pitch drum sound. It's up to you. Tuning by ear is an art and you will get better at it with experience. After you find the right pitch, you will next want to make sure that the pitch is consistent around all of the edges of the drum head near each lug. Using a drumstick, tap the edge of the drum near each lug. If some parts sound low, tighten the rod nearest to that part of the drum. If some parts sound high, loosen the rod. It's all about consistency all around the drum head. Repeat this tuning procedure on the bottom head of the drum, known as the resonant head. The resonant head is often tightened a little higher than the top batter head, but again, that's up to you and the sound you are looking for. I Drum Tune Pro. Here's a tip to make tuning a cinch. Use the iDrum Tune Pro app. It provides a pitch tuning mode where you can strike the middle of the drum to find out what frequency your drums tune to. It also has a lug tuning mode, which will help you achieve pitch consistency all around the lugs. It even provides presets that suggest frequencies that you might want to set all of your different drums to. It's a more accurate way to tune your drums than by just using your ear, and it's really affordable. Under 10 bucks. It's worth it in my opinion. Accessories. So as you strike your tuned drums, you may find that they have a long overring. I personally don't like that, and no matter how much money I've spent on a drum set, I like to place drum dots on my drum heads to reduce overring. They are easy to put on and take off and you can even place them on the bottom of a drum head. I love these things. They make a big difference for very little money. I'll leave a link. Next, let's add some dampening to our bass drum. I'm just gonna use a few rolled up towels for now. You can push them up against the front or back head or both, depending on the kind of sound you want. They sell pads and pillows on Amazon that work even better because they don't move around in the drum. I'll leave a link to those items in the description below this video too. 
Again, no matter how much you've spent on a drum set, adding some dampening to your bass drum is pretty common. Sound test. Let's do a quick sound test on the Pearl Roadshow drum set. Because camera microphones are horrible and won't give you much of an idea of how a drum set really sounds, I've set up two overhead microphones and one mic each on the snare and bass drum. Let's listen. Review The Roadshow drum set is an entry-level drum set, but in my opinion, it doesn't sound that way. If you tune it carefully and add a few inexpensive accessories, it sounds great. Plus, it's made by Pearl, a top drum manufacturer that you can trust. All the hardware is very sturdy, and the set is also quite stylish in my opinion. If I had to nitpick, the cymbals are okay to start out with. But if you want a great cymbal sound, you will need to replace them. I like my cymbals to have more of a sizzle. If you're the same way, I'll leave links to a few popular brands that you will love. Also, the drum heads that come with the kit, and most kits for that matter, are not great. You should upgrade them when you have the chance for better sound control. That being said, this kit is an incredible value in my opinion, and I think it'll put a big smile on your face whether you are a new drummer or someone just getting back into it. Drum Lesson One last thing, if you are just starting out as a drummer, here's the first beat that I learned. With your left foot, push down on the hi-hat pedal to close the hi-hats. With your right hand holding a drumstick, tap quickly on the hi-hats and count in your head with each tap, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and repeat. Then, with your right foot, tap on the bass drum pedal on one and three. Then, with your left hand holding a drumstick, strike the snare drum on two and four. This simple beat will set you on the path to build up to more creative drum beats and drum fills. As far as holding the sticks, place the sticks between the first creases in your thumb and forefinger. Then bring the rest of your fingers in, but no reason to hold the sticks too tight with these fingers. Most of the movement will be in your wrist. Your arm shouldn't be moving a lot unless you are moving to a different drum. Try not to be stiff, and above all, have fun. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe.